one of the signatures, it's not only the rub, it's not only the sauce, but it's the wood they cook with. The wood I could get all the time was hickory. People talk about hickory being a really strong flavored wood. I think the way I use it, I minimalize that. I offset it by a really clean fire. Hickory can be strong. I would move the wood around. I would try and keep it over a bed of coals. A clear, light blue smoke is really good. A, a, a heavy, dark, black colored smoke is, is, is not so good. I, I recommend typically to everybody cooking barbecue, run the smallest fire that you can get away with. Because a fire that'll breathe and gets plenty of oxygen will produce a better flavored smoke than, than a fire that's too big and smoldering. By doing log cabin style where we just place two pieces of wood as needed, probably every 15 minutes or so, and allowing the gaps there, it, it'll breathe. I like to treat smoke as a, as a seasoning, as a flavor, and, and I want that smoke to be pleasant smoke. You've been to places where they burn wood down to coals and then they add those coals to the whole hog. That's the most, that, that's such a mild smoke and, and it's so nice. So you can see the smoke starting to kick out of that end piece right now. But back before I did um, smaller pieces of wood, it, it was inevitable that these larger logs would always have a piece uh, where the, the end wasn't over the coals and it would just put out a lot of smoke. So that, I didn't invent this. This is called the Minion Method. A fellow named Jim Minion came up with it. The idea behind the Minion Method is to get a, a long cook, not have it get too hot on you. You can see what I've done is I've just kind of made like a, a, a run of charcoal. You could come in at this point with a, a chimney full of charcoal and, and just light a, a few amount of briquettes. And once those briquettes are going, we just pour those to one end of the run of the charcoal. And the idea behind it is it just kind of weeps along, doesn't get too hot, and you get a longer burn. The idea with this would be, in this case, I'm just gonna take some, some coals and I'm gonna put them right here. And I'm just cheating with the fire that I have in, in the fire pit. But we'll just kind of let that cruise and get going and then do a slow burn all the way around. Depending on how much fuel we put over here to start, we could probably have this pit up in, uh, at our operational temperature, you know, desired temperature in 30 to 45 minutes. Let's find out. So they're looking pretty good. Uh, I gotta say, yours look really good. Um, <laughs> You're surprised? No, I'm okay. not. I'm not. <laughs> You're running this show for a reason. So, anyways, we're going to go and wrap them now. All right, so I say we start with the meat side up, and you can just tell by that bend that they're, they're just not quite cooked all the way. So this is up to you. It's chef's choice. This, as I was saying, is this is an opportunity or a place where we can add in a little bit more flavor. For me, I'm just going to reinforce my rub a little bit more and just come in with a light sprinkle. Man, yours smells good. Doesn't that smell good? Smell it. I took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I just hit it with a little moisture, and you can too. And then I'm just gonna flip it, and I'm going to meat side down, and do it again. Tuffy just add water. Tuffy didn't approve of the apple juice that he had. Yeah, I know. It wasn't up to It was a little, it was a little cloudy. So when I wrap, there's a couple of things that I do. I wrap it in a way to where I, I can unwrap it and check it later. The other thing when wrapping ribs is I don't want to puncture the aluminum foil with the bone. The so focus. I always fold this way first. And I fold this way. And I fold this way. This looks about like the way I uh, wrap a present. Not very good. So now I'm gonna put this back on the grill, on the cool side, meat side down, and when I go to check it when I'm ready, I can just unwrap it that way with ease versus if I just crinkled it all up. So we're going back to the cool side, meat side down, had about two hours of smoke on them. They're looking kind of tender. If we start to bend it back and the meat starts to tear like that, they're done. Okay. We could take a toothpick, we could go right through the meat. We could take a thermometer and they'd probably be about 205 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So you sauce and I'll flip. Some of the things that I think uh, 
Some of the things that I think people make a mistake with when it comes to sauce is, especially when it comes to grilled and smoked meats, is we don't cook the meat until it's uh, tender before we sauce it. I think sometimes we get in this rush. We think, man, I gotta get this dinner ready, so I'm going to add a little sauce to it, even though the meat's not done. This sauce and many barbecue sauces have uh, sugar in them. And if, that's, if that sauce gets too hot, it burns, as you well know. So I always recommend that, that saucing be a finishing step, that it be something, you cook the meat until it's tender, and then at the end, we apply the sauce, and we don't add too much, too much sauce to it. I think that uh, your best barbecue doesn't need any sauce at all. I, I think your ribs that we're gonna be getting to after we get these on the grill will probably uh, reinforce that idea. So we'll just take this one back over here to the grill and let it just heat up. So this is the, uh, the savory Can rib. Roll? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it's perfect. All right, so this is something that I personally recommend. It's so much easier to cut a rack of ribs with the bone side up because we can come in with our knife. And, and, you. and that's right. Um, I don't know, I think you did a good job. And this is, it smells great. And if this was overcooked, they'd be falling apart even trying to cut them right now. So it's a very fine line between tag and just right to either over or under. That's right. A little spritz. And if you wanted to, just a little sprinkle. There you go, ma'am.